I'm going to give a brief introduction to the idea of adsorption in this screencast and then derive the Langmuir isotherm, which is perhaps the simplest model of adsorption. So what we mean by adsorption is the preferential concentration of a species on the surface of a solid or a liquid, where the surface is defined as any interface between two phases. We'll concentrate on a solid here, and this can be adsorption from the gas phase or from the liquid phase. Adsorption depends on the molecule being adsorbed, and so is used often for separations. The most common way to carry out adsorption is on a high surface area material because the larger the surface area, the more locations for adsorption to take place, and therefore the more effective the adsorption would be. We obtain high surface areas by having pores. So what I've drawn is just a very schematic representation of a cross section of a solid sphere. And this is not to scale, but the idea is there are small pores running throughout this solid so that we can have a lot of surface area per volume. And if we were to look at a blow up of one of these, what we have is a pore where we can have molecules adsorbing on the surface of these pores. And what we're interested in then is this adsorption. So the terms that we're going to use, the concentration of B in the liquid phase, and we'll look at adsorption from the liquid, but the exact same idea is going to apply for adsorption from the gas phase. And then we'll look at the amount adsorbed. So this is moles per kilogram of solid. So we concentrate the molecules from the liquid phase preferentially on the surface where we have B dissolved in some solvent and the solvent very weakly or does not adsorb at all. The terminology that's often used in adsorption is to look at what fraction of the surface is covered with component B. So we're going to just look at one species in this introduction, but the same ideas apply when we have multiple species, all of which adsorb. So the fraction of the surface that's covered with B would be the amount of B adsorbed at some concentration in the liquid phase over the maximum amount we could adsorb, or what's referred to as the saturation amount that we could adsorb on the surface. And then what we're interested in is equilibrium adsorption the Langmuir isotherm. So we're measuring this at constant temperature. And at equilibrium, we continually absorb and desorb molecules. So the rate of adsorption onto the surface is the same as the rate of desorption. So we have a constant amount adsorbed. The rate of adsorption is equal to a rate constant for adsorption. The concentration of B in the liquid phase and then the fraction of sites that are vacant and available for adsorption. So this is assuming molecules only adsorb where there's not already a B molecule adsorbed. There's a finite number of these sites. And this adsorption rate is equal to a rate constant for desorption and the fraction of the sites that are occupied by molecule B. If there's more B on the surface, then the rate that B is desorbing would also be higher. And then we would use the fact that the fraction of vacant sites plus the fraction of sites occupied by B must add to 1. There's no other molecules absorbing for this simple example. And so we can make this substitution for theta V. So I've made this substitution, then I've simplified a bit, and this rate constant for adsorption over the rate constant for desorption we're going to define as our adsorption equilibrium constant. And so if we now solve for the fraction of the surface occupied by B, it's the adsorption equilibrium constant, the concentration in the liquid phase over 1 plus the adsorption equilibrium constant concentration at the liquid phase. And this is the Langmuir isotherm. This is commonly used to create simple models of adsorption on solids from both the liquid phase and the gas phase. 
And if we were to plot what this looks like, here's how the fractional coverage varies as a function of concentration. Somewhere up here, the coverage is 1. At low concentrations of B in the liquid phase, this is going to be linear, just the adsorption equilibrium constant times the concentration of B in the liquid phase. At high enough concentrations, this is where the surface becomes saturated and theta B approaches 1. So we could measure adsorption by just taking advantage of our ability to measure concentrations and doing a mass balance. So we could imagine we had a container with a, a solvent that is not going to adsorb. And the concentration of B then in this solvent, and for simplicity just call this the initial concentration of B in the liquid phase. We then add the solid, stir this well, let it get the equilibrium. We'll now measure a final concentration of B. This final concentration, of course, is the one that we use in the Langmuir isotherm. And the final concentration is less than initial concentration because of adsorption on the solid surface. We know the volume of the starting liquid. We measure the difference in these concentrations. We can calculate how much is adsorbed. We can calculate QB and we can make measurements up to saturation to determine the saturation coverage. The amount adsorbed is a function of temperature, so as we raise the temperature, the adsorption equilibrium constant decreases, and this is because the activation energy for adsorption is less than the activation energy for desorption, so the desorption rate constant increases faster with temperature. This is very similar to chemical reactions because adsorption is exothermic. And so raising the temperature, we decrease that equilibrium constant. So I'm showing here a better plot of Langmuir isotherms at three temperatures, T1, T2, T3, where T3 is higher than T2, which is higher than T1. And so as the temperature goes up, we have to go to much higher concentrations to get close to saturation. Now, the Langmuir isotherm is only an approximation, and it has a number of assumptions, many of which are not going to apply in many situations. So here are the assumptions. One, that the surface is uniform, and this is certainly often not the case. Two, that we have monolayer adsorption, which often is a very good approximation. And then we have one molecule per site. This may or may not be good. Also assumes the molecules don't interact. As they get close together, for example, on the catalyst surface, absorbing from the gas phase, get much higher concentrations. Molecules are close together. Repulsive interactions can be important. It affects then how much absorbs. And then absorption occurs only by collision with a vacant site because we assume the absorption is proportional to a fraction of vacant sites available. But this is certainly not always the case. Molecules can collide with a site already occupied and move along the surface to a vacant site. But the Langmuir isotherm is a good approximation to help to understand this idea of adsorption.